very good morning today's topic is merchant banking in present day capital market scenario the merchant bank plays an encouraging and supporting force to the entrepreneurs corporate sectors and the investors so in today's video we are going to discuss about the concept of merchant banking what is the difference between commercial banks and merchant banks what are the objectives and functions of merchant banks what are the guidelines that are issued by sebi for the merchant bankers and what are the do's and don'ts of the merchant banks so let's start with the merchant banking merchant banking is the combination of banking and the consultancy services what is consultancy consultancy means to provide advice guidance and services so it is very well clear here that the merchant banking provides the banking services along with the advice guidance and services but what about the advice guidance and services it is about the portfolio services underwriting insurance credit syndication or project counseling or any other services related to the capital market so the term merchant banking is used differently in the different parts of the world in uk merchant banking refers to the accepting and the issue houses whereas in usa it is known as investment banking merchant banks include skill oriented professional services they provide these services to their clients in india merchant banking services was started in 1967 by national gridless bank followed by the city bank in 1970 the state bank of india was the first indian commercial bank having the setup of merchant banking division in 1972 a merchant bank can be defined as a institution or an organization which provide number of professional services like management of the securities issue portfolio services underwriting of the capital issues insurance credit syndication financial advices and project counseling services merchant banks are the financial institutions they provide specialist services which generally include the acceptance of bill corporate finances portfolio management and other banking services this definition was given by d cox so this is all about the merchant banking now what is the difference between the commercial bank and the merchant bank commercial banks mainly dealt with the debt and the debt related finances whereas the merchant banks deals with the equity and equity related finances commercial bank are asset oriented whereas merchant banks are management oriented commercial banks are merely financiers whereas merchant banks provide professionally skilled services like portfolio services underwriting services insurance credit syndication project counseling etc so this is the basic difference between the commercial bank and the merchant bank now what are the objectives of merchant banks merchant banks act as a foundation for the small scale companies in terms of their finance so the first objective is to provide the funds to the companies second function is to do the underwriting so the merchant banks act as a underwriter third manage their portfolio this is called portfolio management so the merchant banker used to manage the portfolios they offer the corporate advisory services means they offer advices specially to the startup companies and to those who really want to expand their businesses 
and the last objective is to manage the corporate issues like listing of the issue prospectus or registrars uh, custodians etc so these are the main objectives of the merchant bank now what are the functions of merchant bank merchant banks provide so many services out of which the first function is the promotional activities a merchant bank functions as a promoter of the industrial enterprises in india they help the entrepreneurs in conceiving an idea identification of the projects preparing the feasibility reports obtaining approval from the government as well as incentives some merchant bankers also provide assistance for the technical and the financial collaboration as well as joint ventures second function is issue management as i already told you they help in the preparation of the prospectus underwriting arrangements appointment of the registrars brokers and bankers to the issue how to do the advertising and arranging the publicity and compliance of the listing requirement of the stock exchange so these are the two important function next function is credit syndication merchant banks provide specialized services in the preparation of the project loan application for raising the short term as well as the long term credit from the various banks and financial institution they also helps in managing the euro issue or helps in raising the funds from the abroad fourth function is portfolio management they advise their client mostly institutional investors regarding their investment decisions they even undertake the function of purchase and sale of securities for their client so as to provide them portfolio management services they helps in operating the mutual funds as well as offshore funds for their clients next function is leasing and finance many merchant bankers provide these facilities they even maintain venture capital fund to assist the entrepreneurs they also help companies in raising finance by the way of public deposit next function is servicing of issues merchant banks have also started to act as a paying agents for the services of debt securities and to act as a registrar and transfer agents thus they maintain the registers of shareholders and debenture holders and arrange to pay the dividend and interest which are due to them they along with all these function they also provide other specialized functions like they give advices in the issues like mergers amalgamation tax matter recruitment of the executive cost and management audit etc many merchant banker have also started making of brought out deals of shares and debentures so the activities of the merchant banks are increasing day by day with the changes in the financial market so these are the important functions of the merchant banks now there are certain guidelines that is issued by the sebi for the merchant bankers sebi has categorized merchant banks into four categories category 1 is allowed to carry out all the activities like underwriting giving the advices portfolio management services management of the issues etc but for that they have to keep the minimum net worth of rupees 1 crore category 2 involves the authorized to act as a advisor or underwriter or portfolio manager here the minimum net worth is rupees 50 lakh so all the merchant bankers of the second category can act as a advisor underwriter or portfolio manager 
category 3 involves the merchant banks can act as an advisor and the underwriter and the minimum net worth required is rupees 20 lakh category 4 include all those merchant bankers who can act as a advisor and the minimum net worth which is required here is nil means you don't have to keep any money or there is no requirement of minimum net worth they require the authorization by the sebi but there are certain criteria like they should have a professional education in the law finance or business administration adequate infrastructure for the office experienced employees capital adequacy and past record of the personal as well as social and financial accounts they have to pay the fee fee are of three type authorization fee annual fee and renewal fee they have to furnish half yearly unaudited financial results to the sebi sebi has the power to suspend or cancel the authorization if they feel any doubt about the working of the merchant bank so merchant bank has to keep the transparency in their operations inspection will be conducted by sebi at any time to safeguard the customer or to give the solution to the customer complaints so these are the certain guidelines that are issued by the sebi for the merchant bankers now we will study about the do's and the don'ts of the merchant banker they have to keep high standard of integrity and fairness in their working they have to provide best possible advice to their client true and adequate information will be given by them fair allotment should be done adequate dealing with the complaints from the investors provide all the professional services to their clients what they don't have to do is they do not have to practice unfair competition do not deal in the securities without disclosing it to sebi do not pass any sensitive information to the clients do not create false market and do not take any option which is unfair to the investor so these are the do's and don'ts of the merchant banker i hope the concept of merchant banking is almost clear to everyone so at last i would like to conclude that merchant banks are rendering diverse services the recent change in the indian economy and the financial market has given further impetus to the faster development of the merchant banking so merchant bankers benefit the corporate clients in number of ways thank you for today i hope you all are able to understand the basic concept of merchant banking thank you